Thank you very much for joining me today, Verity, from Tradey Wives. So glad to have you with me on the podcast. I would love you if you could just do a little bit of an intro into who you are and what you do, please. Um, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so I run a totally accidental business <laughs> called Tradey Wives and um it started as a Facebook group to help me with my husband's business. So I sort of um, saw my husband struggling a bit. He's a landscaper. Um, felt like I could add value because my background is marketing and advertising and started helping him in the business. Um, I had no idea about the industry, about trades, not a clue. So I really wanted to connect with other women sort of doing a similar role to what I was because I felt like there was probably others out there. Um, and yeah, started a Facebook group to learn how to hire an apprentice and what accounting software to use. And I thought no one would join, but it very quickly went up to now, I think 21,000, um, women who are all there supporting each other and, um, going through the same challenges and sort of learning from each other. So yeah, it's been, it's been a wild ride. And how long has that, um, group been around? Uh, I started it in 2018. So five-ish, almost yeah. five-ish years, something like that. Yeah. So a group of 21,000 in that period of time that is a very active group is no small feat. Like, yeah. yeah. And when, if you, so just tell us a little bit more about what you started to do with your husband's business to help him out and how that, how, how did that go? Yeah, <laughs> you can imagine, can't you? Um, so first off, I sort of, yeah, I, I sort of would watch him on the tools all day, come home absolutely exhausted, people calling him, him not wanting to call anyone back, paperwork was everywhere. I don't know if he'd done his taxes for about five years. Um, it, it was just, it was a mess. And he's so talented at what he does, but the business side of things, he just, he didn't want to do it. He didn't like it. Um, and you know, he really struggled with it. So I thought, okay, I can maybe take some of the pressure off, start helping with just organizing everything. Um, you know, we needed a new accountant because his one was just terrible. Um, just like get social media going, get the website going. Um, and yeah, so I sort of started off slowly, maybe like one day. And then it started, you know, it was going really well. So I ended up doing it full time um and yeah it was it was there were definite teething problems um with that um it was difficult because I was quite stressed learning how to do it all trying to find the answers trying to find out how to hire everything sort of jumping into a bit of a mess having to try and sort it out um but yeah look it, it had its challenges but in the end it was very worthwhile and how long, if you had to estimate, were the challenges for, for the bulk of those challenges? Um, that's a really good question. They were probably, oh, look, to be honest, probably about six months because I really felt like, you know, it came with finding a good accountant, finding um, a web designer, um, getting everything in order and it sort of takes a while to learn things like uh, we use zero implemented that it was quite difficult to learn particularly me I hate numbers so it was <laughs> extra challenging for me um, and just to get into a groove of who does what who can help you what you can sort of take on um, and sort of get a feel for the role and actually what it is um, so I, I do probably think it took six months to sort out and what do you think if you had to say what would the, the major challenge was during that six month period, what do you think that would be? What it was for you? Uh, for me, bookkeeping, 100%. 100%. I hate it. I've always hated numbers. I don't understand it. Um, learning zero, trying to work all that out. Yeah, I found, I found bookkeeping was very challenging, but also just being in, a, in business together, I suppose, sort of um, working together trying to kind of define each other's roles. Um, yeah, that, that was a big challenge. And 
if you could share a lesson, was there one or two things that you did to make that work? Mm. Um, in terms of the bookkeeping, I quickly got rid of that. So I, while I wanted to understand it um, and have a bit of an idea about how it all worked, I didn't want to do it. I just didn't want to risk making the mistake and ending up in jail, probably all of us. And, <laughs> and that's a really, really good point because um, we were mentioning this just before we started that I talked to so many tradies who have palmed off the bookkeeping to their wife or partner who has no history nor training in that and then we just expect everything to be done at the level that it should be and while bookkeeping can be simple in parts it is very easy to stuff it up not realize and then get yourself in a bit of trouble um, all of a sudden so that's what we want to try and avoid so for all of those listening all those tradies listening who think they can just palm that off to their wife or partner um I really encourage you to have a conversation with the wife and partner to see if they actually have any interest in numbers and doing that. And if they don't, then please hire a specialist to do that. Because like Verity just mentioned, you can get in a lot of trouble very quickly, but you very quickly identified that was not your strength. It was never going to be your strength. And you decided not to waste any of your precious time on something that you knew was never going to be fun for you so many people don't do that so that's a huge congratulations because that would have saved i would have assumed taken a whole lot of stress off your shoulders and also the comfort in knowing that your numbers are done correctly is like yeah it's invaluable yeah absolutely it's invaluable knowing that having that pressure off knowing that it's in the hands of a professional and you don't have to worry about doing something wrong and you know the ato aren't the most leaning into people a lot of the time. So no, it was definitely, definitely a weight off my shoulders to outsource that. And, and in that as well, Katie, like you were saying, I think it's so important to be able to play to your strengths too. I didn't like bookkeeping and I wanted to get rid of it, but I loved the marketing side because that was my background and I really enjoyed doing it. So I think as well, finding the strengths of what you do and don't want to do is really helpful in that role. Mm. And I would assume that that playing to your strength would have helped your communication, would have helped define your roles. Yeah. And then would have that made, made that initial period less bumpy once you decided that you were going to stick to your strengths. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm. And with the communication and the defining of the roles, tell us a little bit about how that worked for you both. Like what was kind of the process? Was it more you both had a discussion around it and decided on it or did one of you take the lead how did that process look yeah it was um it was trial and error we didn't we didn't have a discussion about it at all um it was just sort of I just take things I think I kind of took the lead because Craig's very easygoing so he's sort of just like okay whatever whatever you reckon like I'll leave it to you which is great but um I sort of yeah I took the lead with um you know, what I recognised needed doing um, and then just sort of playing around with it, like just trying things out. Okay, I don't like that. I'll move on to something else. Um, but also like not getting, and I think for me, not getting overwhelmed with having to do everything all at once mm -hmm. um, is something because I felt like I just needed to do it all. I needed to have it all sorted. But, you know, just finding a bookkeeper and accountant or finding someone to help you with your website like they're big things they're you know they're they're relationships you build that are going to help you you know so much down the track and and finding the right people to help you and to to do that you know they're they're really big things so um so yeah so I think it's just a matter of um yeah just trial and error really and then with regards to finding those key partners, so the accountant and bookkeeper and so on, what did that process look for you, look like for you? How did you find those people? Yeah, so basically this is how the group came about, uh, the, the Facebook group, because it was really hard. Like it was, originally I was going on Google, just Googling accountants in the area, um, web designers, and I didn't really know what I was looking for or who was good. Um, I ended up emailing a couple of local landscapers um 
asking for their help like hey do you guys recommend you know this or you know how do I hire an apprentice or who do you use and no one ever wrote back to me <laughs> um and so I was like huh, I wonder yeah I wonder if I start this Facebook group if you know anyone will join and I can kind of like ask questions and we can sort of go through these challenges together and and yeah that's sort of how it took off where we sort of like started the Facebook group we were asking questions and then very organically I saw a need to have a, uh, a directory where um, you know you could go to web designers accountants bookkeepers business coaches um, and have people there that you know particularly for me it sort of came apparent that I needed to you know have people that I could really trust on there to to give the members a really good experience because it is quite daunting reaching out to people in the beginning and um and yeah it's really important to have people who I can trust to you know provide a really good experience to the community and um yeah so it, it's really been great to have other tradey wives around to to ask advice from and I think that's a really key um point that I talk about with my clients all the time about asking questions even when you don't know what to ask just start asking some questions and start getting a little bit more information because then you can ask a better question and that just continues to snowball until you're really able to ask really great questions because being able to ask the right questions yeah to the right people is going to be able to get you the right answers and that's going to save you money and time and all of those sorts of things but what i see happen is people just don't ask the questions because they don't know who to ask yeah. so then they do nothing yeah. and they're still in the same situation so it's one of the things about the group that I love that you have is people can ask questions in there and sometimes like you can clearly tell if they're new to business or whatever else but then when people come in and respond they'll help them craft a better question I guess so they can get a, a better answer so the lesson to everyone is always ask the questions even if you feel like it's not the greatest question just get started and always reach out to to other people around you find that group find people in a situation similar to yours so that you can grow together um because i see it so often it's like they've been in business for five ten years and haven't just been too afraid to ask questions and they're just in the same spot doing the same things same problems as they were five years ago and that's not what we want to happen at all <laughs> no and there's no such thing I think you're right like and I was the same too you're so worried about asking a stupid question or you feel like you should know the answer and you're right I've done that too where you've just not done anything because you're worried and you think oh, I should know this and you kind of just you kind of just freeze and you don't do anything and then you get even more stressed so um I remember once when in the very beginning asking a question in the group I was like oh I feel like this is a stupid question like I should know the answer to this and I asked it anyway and so many people jumped on like oh that's a great question I want to know that too or oh I've done this but I'm not sure if it's right let's see if anyone else has the answer and I was like oh I should just ask this in the beginning exactly and one of the things I tell my clients is um some of the time even when you ask the question that then prompts the answer mm. but if you don't ask the question you're not going to get that prompt so just I'm anyone who has ever talked and worked with me knows I talk, I harp on about asking questions all of the time. Don't be afraid to ask questions. So, and I just say that group came about because you wanted somewhere to be able to ask the questions and get that support. And it does that beautifully. What I would love to know is with, with how you work at the moment in, um, or how much work you do in Craig's business at the moment? And then what has come from the Tradie Wives Facebook group? As you said, there's the um, the directory. And what else is, uh, what other services are there for those members? Um, yeah, so I'm still obviously doing all Craig's um, back office work. To be honest, that has slowed as Tradie Wives has grown. She likes to remind me of daily um <laughs> it's like uh do you remember me do you remember how this all started like I still need help and I say to him Craig it's gonna have to hire someone <laughs> um this so, is a really good point though yeah. and as the wife or the partner if we have an interest or if we have a business idea or if we have a job that we want to go back to 
just because we are helping our partner out through a period of time doesn't mean we need to stay doing that if that doesn't make bring us joy as well and that's something also I'd love to highlight um that it's perfectly okay to grow another business or to go back to work in in your previous positions or whatever it may be you don't have to be saving hubby's business for the rest of your life yeah absolutely and I really think as well you have to have your own interest because that that helps the business itself I think when you're in each other's pockets and it's always about the business relationship you know the kids it's like it's a lot so to have your own interests or your own your side business or whatever it is I think that is so important to your well-being and and how well the business operates um and I think like you were sort of touching on there is that you sort of have to want to do it I feel like you don't feel like you have to do it if you don't want to there are so many people out there that can help um and you don't want to be in a position where you're resenting doing what you're doing or it's causing you too much stress because it's just yeah it's just no way to live no and then that stress as you say spills over to the family and the relationship and all of those things and then everything is a disaster and that's that's not what we want we have um you know those in trades businesses have enough things to juggle Mm. with staff and materials and all of that type of thing we don't need to add anything else on it and I think it's something that many don't realize is that there's other solutions out there yes it's great if your wife and partner can be helping out but that doesn't have that's not the only solution if it isn't enjoyable for them yeah absolutely that is awesome Um, I'll go ahead no I was just gonna say in terms of the other question about the what other services are there um I was just going to say we do have the directories and then we also have from that a business academy um, where we do monthly masterclasses from our directory partners so we get experts on to um, do training in certain areas where I feel the group needs it so I sort of scan the group and see what the hot topics are of you know people's biggest pain points and then I'll get uh, a professional in that field to come on and do a masterclass over in our business academy um, and talk through those issues and, and try and find a resolution. And I think that that's been really valuable too, to um, actually have that sort of monthly training. And we also get together once a week for a virtual coffee with that community. And it's nice to kind of just catch up with people and feel like, um, you know, you're able to have that kind of virtual face-to-face interaction because I feel like as well when you are thrown into this kind of role it can be quite isolating and it's nice to be able to have that connection with people too. And I think um, that's key if you're not sure if the admin bookkeeping marketing side of the partner or husband's business is for you then joining the group um, jumping in on these sorts of things is going to help you give you the education Mm -hmm. to then let you make a better decision around it so if, oh I don't like it now but is that because I just don't like it or because I just don't have enough knowledge so it feels really awful to me get the knowledge again you don't have to be the expert but just take those steps to be able to make it <clears throat> make a better decision around it and then also you'll have more information to be able to when you if you decide to hire people for different parts of the business then you've got more knowledge around it to make better decisions as well So I just wanted to finish up with one final question. If you could give though our listeners, so if um, whether they're the tradie or if we have any wives or partners listening, actually one piece of advice for the tradie and one piece of advice for the wife or the partner. Uh, Okay. Um, I'll start with the tradie first. Um, And I think it's got to be... um, yeah, if, if you're thinking about working with your partner in the business, um, I think that another thing to think about is sort of appreciating that perhaps like we've talked about, what they're going to start off doing isn't their background, isn't their skill set. Um, so just understanding that it is going to be a lot of trial and error and things aren't going to go smoothly from the very beginning. There's going to be a lot of teething problems, a lot of learning. Um, so just be open um to 
perhaps outsourcing different parts of the business that you were hoping to keep in-house for the sake of sake of everyone's happiness, I think, and, and just be very open with, with communication. Awesome. Um, to the wife, um, I, yeah, I really think just don't too much, put too much pressure on yourself. I think it's sort of jumping into that role. Um, um, you know, it is going to be most of the time brand new. So just, yeah, just be easy on yourself and don't do things that you don't enjoy um, and, you know, surround yourself with with other like-minded women because there's so many people out there willing to jump in and support so you don't have to do it all alone. Excellent. And your Facebook group is just Tradey Wives, so they can search up that, yeah, join that. Plenty of people there. As I said, it's a... Um, a group that has lots of discussions in it. It's very active, which is super helpful. So don't be afraid to um, reach out and join that group. And if you are already in the group and haven't reached out and asked questions in there yet, then I highly recommend that you do take that step. Awesome. Thank you very much, Verity. So lovely to have you on here today. Um, yeah, I just wanted to get another angle and another side rather than me talking about business all the time and just give some of our tradies who are listening a bit of a sneak peek in what it's like to be the partner of or the wife of our tradies. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Katie. No